So I have the function g of x is equal to nine times eight to the x minus one power, and it's defined for x for x being a positive, or if x is a positive integer. If x is a positive, positive integer. So we could say the domain of this function, or all of the valid inputs here, are positive integers. So one, two, three, four, five, on and on and on. So this is an explicitly defined function. What I now want to do is to write a recursive definition of this exact same function. That given an x, it'll give the exact same outputs. So let's first just try to understand the inputs and outputs here. So let's make a little table. Let's make a table here. And let's think about what what happens when we put in various x's into this function definition. So the domain is positive integers, so let's try a couple of them. One, two, three, four. And then see what the corresponding g of x is. g of x. So when x is equal to one, g of x is nine times eight to the one minus one power, or nine times eight to the zero power, or nine times one. So g of x is gonna be just nine. When x is two, when x is two, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be nine times eight to the two minus one. So that's the same thing as nine times eight to the first power, and that's just gonna be nine times eight. So that is 72. Actually, let me just write it that way. Let me write it as just nine times eight. Nine times eight. Then, when x is equal to three, what's going on here? Well, this is gonna be three minus one is two, so it's gonna be eight squared. So it's gonna be nine times eight squared. So we could write that as nine times eight times eight. I think you see a little bit of a pattern forming. When x is four, this is gonna be eight to the four minus one power, eight to the third power, so that's nine times eight times eight times eight. So this gives us a good clue about how we would define this recursively. Notice, if our first term, when x equals one is nine, every term after that is eight times, is eight times the preceding term. Is eight times the preceding term. Eight times the preceding term. Eight times the preceding term. So let's define that as a recursive function. So first we'll define our base case. So we could say, g of x, g, and I'll do this in a new color, just because I'm overusing the red. I like the blue. g of x, well, we can define our base case. It's going to be equal to nine if x is equal to one. g of x equals nine if x equals one. So that took care of that right over there. And then if it equals anything else, if it equals anything else, it equals the previous g of x, so if we're looking at, if we're looking at, let's go all the way down to x minus one and then an x. So if this, if this entry right over here, if this entry right over here is g of x minus one, g of x minus one, however many times we multiply the eights and we have a nine in front. So this is g of x minus one. We know that g of x, we know that this one right over here is going to be the previous entry, g of x minus one, the previous entry, that's the previous entry, times eight. Times eight. Times eight. So we could write that right here. So times eight. So for any other x other than one, g of x is equal to the previous entry. So it's g of, I'll do that in a blue color, g of x minus one, g of x minus one times eight. If x is greater than one, or x is x is integer integer greater greater than one. Now let's verify that this actually works. So let's draw another table here. Let's draw another table here. So once again, we're gonna have x and we're going to have g of x, but this time we're gonna use this recursive definition for g of x. And the reason why it's recursive is that it's referring to itself. In its own definition, it's saying, hey, g of x, well, if x doesn't equal one, it's gonna be g of x minus one. It's using the function itself, but we'll see that it actually does work out. 
So let's see, when x is equal to one, x equals one, so g of one, well if x equals one, it's equal to nine. It's equal to nine, so that was pretty straightforward. What happens when x equals two? Well when x equals two, this case doesn't apply anymore, we go down to this case. So it's going to be, when x is equal to two, it's going to be equivalent to g of two minus one. Let me write this down. It's going to be equivalent to g of two minus one times eight, which is the same thing as g of one times eight. And what's g of one? Well, g of one is right over here. g of one is nine. So this is going to be equal to nine times eight, exactly what we got over here. And of course, this was equivalent to g of two. So let me write this. This is g of, g of two. Let me scroll over a little bit so I don't get all squunched up. So now let's go to three. Let's go to three. And right now I'll write g of three first. So g of three, g of three is equal to, we're going to this case, it's equal to g of three minus one, three minus one times eight. So that's equal to g of two times eight. Well, what's g of two? Well, g of two we already figured out is nine times eight. So it's equal to nine times eight, that's g of two, times eight again. And so you see we get the exact same results. So this is the recursive definition of this function.